In case you miss it, here's a sports animal rewind. All right, time to talk some Tennessee basketball camps going on. Let me let this music roll. Kick that up a little bit for our next guest. <laughs> New Sentinel Sports page welcomes in the head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers. That would be Conzo Martin. Coach Martin, Vince, Mike Strange, and MJ. How you doing? All right. How you guys doing? Hey, we we talked to you last time. We got some Baby Be Mine for you by, by request. It's a good song. All right. It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, uh, we'll talk to you about your camps and what, what we'll do uh, just so our listeners can can get your description of each one of those camps in just a couple minutes. We'll go through each of them sort of in a lightning rod and then have you describe each of them because I know there's a lot of them and sort of what you're specializing in each one of those camps. So we'll do that in a couple minutes. Um, Coach, obviously a lot of news. Uh, this is <laughs> this has been is, uh, a pretty tough week. I know with uh, with guys leaving the program, that's tough. But uh, how difficult has this week been for you as a head coach? Well, you know, it's, it's tough and in some ways it's unfortunate. But, you, you know, as you run a program, you always have to do what's best for a program. And, you know, you take one day at a time and um, you try to do what's best for young men. That's the most important thing when you're making decisions, doing what's best for young men and ultimately what's best for Tennessee basketball. Uh, Coach, <clears throat> I think a lot of fans are wondering if there's any uh, any relationship, direct or indirect or otherwise, between uh, Landry uh, being released, you know, an, an incoming point guard being released, and Trey Golden, your resident point guard, uh, going. Uh, I, I would assume that on, on the face of it, that that's too situations that really weren't related to each other but i guess my question is did you have you know much did you have insight that this might happen with trey that he might be gone when you you know made the decision to uh let landry go somewhere else well you know first and foremost with with landry you're talking about a a quality young man a great kid great been around you you develop a tremendous bond with him Uh, you know he kind of looks at you as a father figure even though he has a great family, uh, you recruit him over a year and a half. And in that particular case, as a coach, you, I just didn't see the progress. Um, and, and that part was tough uh, to, to call him and make that move because he's a guy that became a part of our family. So anything you have to do as a coach is extremely tough. And it's my first time ever doing it. So so very, very hard because of the relationships. But that decision was based on what was best that I thought for Tennessee basketball and helping a young man as well, because what happens if you bring a young man in, you feel like he's not going to play for you, and all of a sudden potential transfer in December or transfer in the spring when it could have been avoided, which I'd rather take the hit on the front to help everybody involved and then move forward. But, you know, tough deal, but at the same time, you know, I did everything in my power as a coach to try to help him find other schools and making calls, and I'm glad to see he landed in New Mexico State, and I was, I was very happy about that, like I recruited him. So just to see... He landed on his feet because of, because of the guy he is. But in, in Trey's situation, Trey has to do what's best for Trey Golden. Uh, so, but two totally different situations. Uh, one didn't have anything to do with the other. No. But I mean, did you have when, when you made that call to cut Landry loose? Did you have any inkling that maybe you know Trey was going to be gone, and you know maybe maybe there were going to be point guard minutes? Well, one, one thing about it, once again, when I made the decision with Trayvon Landry, that was the decision I thought was best for, you know, Tennessee basketball. That, that, that's I thought that. But, and then, like I said, in Trey's situation, you know, that's what's best for Trey Golden. Busy with Conzo Martin here on the New Sentinel Sports page. Vince Ferrara, Mike Strange. Uh, Coach, at what point did, it, during the, your evaluation of Trayvon Landry and didn't see that progress that you talked about, uh, at what point were, did you reach out to him and his family and say, you know what, this is in your best interest, we need to find you another home? When, well, at what point did that happen? Well, you know, we, you, you talk throughout a year, uh, throughout the course of a season, you're constantly in constant dialogue with a young man. Then they got to a point maybe in December just watching him, some things – that we want to see him, you know, work on or focus on a, a really improve, so to speak. Because the one thing with, with Trayvon, he's he's always a leader, you know, tough, hard nosed defender, pressure the ball, you know, directed traffic. It wasn't really a score. That wasn't his thing. Uh, you know, maybe layups here and there, but he wasn't guys are shooting threes and that sort of thing. So his game was facilitating and being a leader. Uh, so what happens? You're going through December, then you know January, and we go and watch him play, and he didn't play at the level we thought he was was capable of playing it or didn't do the things we need to see him do. So you 
Then you get into early February, and this, and that was the reason why we started recruiting the kid Darius Thompson. When he called, you know, Trayvon and his family, just let him know, man, we we're looking in a different direction from the standpoint of guys that we're recruiting. So he knew about it. So it wasn't a case of you know we're just getting guys to be getting them. He knew about it. Um, but then you know probably um, I would say you know a couple of weeks back, probably ten days from the time he ten to two, ten to two weeks from the time he actually committed to New Mexico State, where I actually had to sit down with him and just say, man, this is I think what's best for a team. But he knew in some ways that you know this was the case. But then I just you know try to find every way possible to make it work. Uh, uh, you know, the one thing I told his dad, I, I felt bad about the timing of it. Uh, because I want to do everything in my power to make it work and have him part of our program. But I think at the end of the day, I, I just felt like I had to do what's best for Tennessee basketball, which is a tough thing to do. It sounds like in some of the quotes that, that they still felt surprised, maybe not that you didn't feel like he was progressing, that maybe that scholarship wasn't going to be there and that you guys looked at him as maybe needing to move on to another spot for what was best for the program. It was it. How did they take it when – did his family take it when you first had that discussion with them about, you know, a few weeks ago that, hey, th- what's best is maybe we find you another spot? How did the family well, take it? Well, you that? know, his dad was a true professional. Uh, once again, a great family. And it was tough. It was tough. It was tough for both sides. I mean, it was tough for me just for, once again, the relationship. Uh, but his, his dad was, you know, real professional body. He just said, Coach, we got to move forward. we got to figure out the best way to help Trayvon find a school. But, I mean, it was, it was tough. I mean, I, I, I can't say it wasn't because once again you develop relationships over time. Um, and the, but but the thing about it was, and I think the where the confusion gets involved, where where we over the scholarship limit, now we make it a move on Trayvon. It had nothing to do with anything because once again, in our camp in this office, we weren't over the scholarship limit. We knew exactly what was going on, what was taking place. So it wasn't a case we in scramble mode. Let's try to find somebody. Let's try to move somebody. We understood every step in the way what was going on. So. So on the surface, it might look like they're over, they're over the limit, but we were fine on this end. Well, you're you're under the limit now, <laughs> clearly, and uh, at, at least as far as we know, you may you may know something we don't know. But without mentioning any names, we are you going to go out there and look for uh, a point guard help for next year? Oh, we keep working. I mean, you have to do. It's part of your job. You got to keep working. So we got some pretty good leads, and we'll and we'll see. Visiting with Conzo Martin here on the new Sentinel Sports page. Coach, talk about Trey Golden and and that decision, how how he took it. I know you've enjoyed having him. You've talked so positively about him an awful lot. But talk about Trey Golden moving on and, and what that came down to. Well, for me as a coach, first and foremost, you wish the best for your guys. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line for, for, for your young guys. You want to be successful in life. And, and as a coach, the thing I try to do all the time is, is – uh, you know, put an umbrella, so to speak, over my guys, and then anything, any way, shape, or form. So I'll be the guy that takes the hits on anything, whatever goes on, my guys. But you know, Trey Golden had to do what was best for Trey Golden. But he's a talented player, a guy that can score the basketball. I mean, he'll bounce back fine, and he'll he'll do what he needs to do to be successful. There's no doubt in my mind. There, there's, you know, naturally a lot of speculation about why he's gone, and and there's been sourced information. I, and I, I assume you can't reveal everything you know about it, but was this decision basically out of your hands or not? <laughs> right. You know, the, the bottom line is, is this is the best decision for Trey Golden. Uh, and everything I do, I do what's best for my players. Uh, and that's without a doubt. I do everything, everything in my power. I'm consumed with helping my players any way, shape, or form. Uh, Anybody knows me knows that without any question. So, but this is a decision that was best for Trey Golden. Visiting with Conzo Martin, head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers. Basketball camps coming up, and that's less than a month away. With all the basketball camps, you can get more information TennesseeSportCamps dot com. You can call the hotline at nine seven four zero seven zero three. We'll let Coach Martin talk about each of those camps and sort of a lightning round on each of those camps here in just one moment. Coach, a lot of people have called Sports Talk, and as you know, fans are look at the the recent run of some players leaving the program. Uh, with Yemi Macanjula, Trevon Landry, and now Trey Golden, separate even with separate situations, fans are sort of grouping those together and say, "Hey, what's going on with the Tennessee basketball program? What, how do you address that when people question what's going on right now?" Oh, I mean, as fans, you, you should be concerned because you, you're part of the program. But 
But there, there are no problems on this end. We, we're fine on this side. Uh, once again, as a coach, you make decisions based on what's best for your guys. Uh, Yemi's transferring to another school, and he should be uh, in the fold, which, whichever school he decides to go to after he take a couple more visits. Uh, and we talk on a daily basis in our office, getting input about schools. And in Trey Golden's situations, Trey Golden has to do what's best for Trey Golden. And Trayvon Landry, I had to do what I felt that was best for Tennessee basketball, which is a tough decision, but I felt like I had to do it. Look, look at the next year uh, without Trey. And, I, and I'm not trying to just be a Pollyanna and say, oh, this is great. They're going to be better off without him. Obviously, you're going to lose some things, losing Trey Golden. But what, you know, it, I guess to put a little bit of a po- potentially positive spin on it, how could you, you know, can you just speculate how you could be better or what things might be better, you, things you could do better uh you know, with a with a different chemistry, different rotation, different lineup out there. Well, I think first and foremost, you have you have the bulk of your guys returning, you have experienced guys returning, you have young, talented guys coming in. Uh, you got to keep Jerron Mamis back in the fold, who's who's looking good right now. Uh, guys are playing better. Guys are getting bigger, stronger, faster. You see the progression of you know Jordan McCray and obviously Jordan L. Stokes. I mean, two elite players, uh, first and second team All League guys. Uh, Josh Richardson, in my opinion, Josh Richardson and Armani Moore, two guys that'll be fighting for a Defensive Player of the Year award, along with Jerron Mayman, in my opinion. So there are three guys right there that'll be battling for that. Uh, so I, I feel good about. It. But anytime you lose a guy that you know give you 12 points and four plus assists, a uh, potential 90 percent free throw shooter. I mean, that's a that's a key loss in any program. Plus a guy that's been in your program for two years that understands your system, what you're trying to do as a program. So that's obviously a key loss. I mean, that, that goes without saying. Coach, talk about the point guard position, maybe in college basketball, but also in your offense and ultimately what what you're looking for in a point guard. Is that different than maybe what we're seeing throughout college basketball, or is that position evolving through the years? Well, I think it's evolving. I mean, But I, but I think if you look back in past years, you know, guys that are scoring points, um, you look around, I mean, you, you look at a guy like Chris Paul who does a tremendous job of facilitating and running the offense and finding guys, but he scores the ball. Darren Williams, they, they score the ball. Uh, I don't know if you, there are many guys that just really set up guys that come down and make a pass and come back and get the ball out top and set up the offense and make a pass. I mean, those guys have the ability to do a lot of things. I just think that's the way the game is played, guys that can do multiple things out there. You, you need to feed the post. You need to have guys on the perimeter, whether it's the point or somebody else, that can feed the post with what you bring back next year, right? Without a doubt. And I feel good about the guys. Uh, you know, right right now, even though it's summertime, Amani's shooting the ball really well. Josh the same. Q's playing at a higher level. Uh, you know, Derek Reese, the guy that's, you know, getting healthy. And, uh, of course, does a tremendous job of shooting and scoring the basketball. So, I mean, the, the pieces are there, um, and we're excited about it. But once again, you lose a major piece to what you're trying to do. But I think we'll be fine. Battle for Atlantis finished off its field. Iowa is in there now. What do you think of the, the field for, for that tournament in the early season for you? Well, I think it's a great field when you talk about Kansas, uh, their, their track record, Iowa, Villanova, Xavier, which will be on opposite brackets with Xavier because we play them early in the season. So we won't, we won't see those guys unless both teams make it to the top or that sort of thing. So, but, it, but it's a great, great field. I feel good about it, but I think you have to play in those type of tournaments, that caliber tournament. We have the personnel to play in elite tournaments like that. It was probably the best tournament in the country last year, you know, pound for pound, as far as the talent and the teams that were in it. Is your schedule set, or do you still have a couple games to fill up? We still got a couple to fill up. We have, we have the, the, the Battle for Atlantis, then we have Wichita State, who's obviously a Final Four team at Wichita State. We play at Xavier. On that uh, Tuesday, uh, that 24-hour hoops, we play at Xavier. I think the time might be 3 or 4 o'clock. I'm not sure. Then we, we have Virginia here, uh, which would be a good one. So we, we're trying to find a couple more. Visiting with Conzo Martin, the head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers. Basketball camps are coming up. Uh, if you're an aspiring basketball player at any age, they're going to use Thompson Bowling Arena and Pratt Pavilion for the basketball camps, improve your skills. Coach, it's, uh, I'll, I'll run through. We'll do it one at a time, and you tell me what the what the the gist of each one of these camps are for our listeners that might be interested. We'll start with a fundamental skills camp, session one, June 3rd through the 6th, session two, June 17th through the 20th. Talk about that. 
the, the fundamental skills, Calvin, is just that a lot of skill work, uh, offensive skill, and, and all these drills are the same thing that we do with our players. And you see the progression of Jordan McRae from start to finish of a season, Armani Moore from start to finish. Josh Richards is probably one of the, has one of the best pull-up games in the country, and not just in the SEC as far as it's going left and right, pulling up in the lane. So all these drills that we'll do with our guys, and this is K through eighth grade, so everything we do is the same thing that we do with our players. I mean, ball handling, penetrating, pitching, jump stopping, uh, bounce passing, post feeds, catch and shoot, shot fakes, uh, left and right hand layups, uh, and different type of layup moves. Uh, and once again, the same stuff we do with our guys, and we, we take pride in that. We, we'll throw a little defense in there. They probably don't want that, but we'll throw a little bit in there. <laughs> that's a that's a given. They won't know what to expect if uh, they won't know what's going on if you don't preach defense. What about the overnight camp, June 16th through the 20th? Well, the overnight camp is the first time that we're, we're doing it here, and it's the first time I've done it as a head coach because I just just always was, you know, trying to be aware and, and taking precaution with young guys staying overnight in camps, being away from home. Uh, the security and that sort of thing. So this is the first time that we're doing it. I told our staff we got to be clicking on all cylinders uh, just to make sure these guys are fine. But it's the fifth through twelfth grade, and once again, it's just a lot of basketball skill. It's half and half. A lot of skill work, and then half of it is, you know, five on five, three on three. Learn how to play without the basketball. More, more teaching, but you do get you know five on five and individual skill work. I know the father son camp is special to you. That's June ninth. It is, and you know, my son, my son, my eleven-year-old son is down, and we have fun with it. But he normally is, you know, partnered up with one of the players because uh, for some reason he doesn't like to play with me. But <laughs> that's fine. But we try to have a lot of fun with that. You probably get in his face from guarding. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, actually, I, I don't play the defense. Last time I stopped playing defense, when I stopped playing, I just talk about it now. I, I don't do it anymore. But it, but that's just a really a fun time, and it has grown tremendously with the fathers uh, in Knoxville and the surrounding communities. I mean, it's, it's just a great event to be a part of. All right, talk about the intense skill camp, session one, June 22nd, session two, August 24th. Well, that's that's the camp that's kind of, you know, you really can't advertise it because, you know, some people might call it, you know, they used to call it an elite camp, so you really can't talk and advertise that, but it's just one of those deals where, you know, it's open to, you know, personnel and the public, but it's more of a high school camp than anything. All right, and then the team camp, uh, June seventh through the ninth. The team camp is high school teams, you know, freshmen, JV, and varsity teams, and and for us, it's a great way to spend time with the high school coaches uh, in the state of Tennessee and the surrounding states that come to the camp. Continue to build those relationships, but just also hang out with the high school coach, but ultimately see the players with their team. Because sometimes you see them in the summertime with, with with AU teams, you don't really see the true player. But it's always good to get those guys to play with their teams and get that team feel. How many teams, you know, do you typically have at a camp like that? Oh, it can be between forty and sixty. Wow! Uh, you, you you want to try to cut it off because the the key is uh, you 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 can get a lot of teams coming in, but you want the quality because you have some really good teams that come in, and you don't want it to be watered down. We're not playing against great competition, uh, so what we try to do we we, we try to cut it off uh, because you want to have the courts available. You want you want to have the time where those guys can take breaks. You don't want to have one team playing four and five guys games in one day. So you want to have the balance so they can have fresh legs, uh, but also play against good competition. If you participate in the Tennessee basketball camps, you get a Tennessee basketball T-shirt and a basketball. Also, you can get autographs from Vols players and coaches as well. Here's how you can get signed up. It's TennesseeSportCamps.com or call that hotline. It's area code 865-974-0703. Coach, anything else you want people to know about your camps? No, we just we love for them to join and be a part of. You know, if you just want to stop by and say hello, that'd be great too. All right, coach, we appreciate you joining us today. Uh, class of you to do it. Thanks so much for the time. Always great to talk to you. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks. That is Conzo Martin, Tennessee men's basketball coach, here on the new Sentinel Sports page.